So the PS5 Pro just got announced and you won't believe how much this thing is. Let's get into it. So yes, Mark Cerny came out with one of his lovely little technical showcases to, to introduce to the world the PS5 Pro. Long rumoured a lot of the specs that we got out there turned out to be true. And we're going to have a little breakdown of some of that in this video and along with some of my thoughts. But to start off, let's head out for that price. Uh, the PS5 Pro is launching on November 7th with pre-orders going live on the 26th of September. And it is retailing for £699.99. But yes, this is £700 without the disk drive and you also need to buy the vertical stand on its own. That is quite the slap in the face. It is far above what I thought this thing was going to cost. Maybe I was being overly optimistic, but I had it in my head it was going to be roughly £500, close to the price of like the disk drive, like the high-end PS5 base. Uh, without a disk drive, so it would have been between £500 and £600, depending on how much you wanted. And I was, I was laughing last night with my friends about people posting stuff like this is going to be 650 with no disk drive. I was like, that is insane. There's no way. There's no way. Turns out there is a way, and it actually went beyond it. So I am. Uh, I was really shocked. I actually had a bit of a double take. Like I thought I was reading the wrong currency. 700 pounds. That's that's like you're getting up there. You're getting really really up there with this price, but. Let's get into why Sony thinks it's worth that price. So for starters, they're breaking down this upgrade in the category of the, the, the big three they were calling it, which is an upgraded GPU, which is roughly 45% faster rendering gameplay. So smoother gameplay experience, higher frame rates. You have advanced ray tracing, which is supposedly able to cast rays at double or sometimes triple the speeds. Um, you know, these games look better with the ray tracing. It's one of those things. And then you have AI driven upscaling, which is essentially um, Sony's version of, uh, or PlayStation's version of DLSS, which is essentially a way to sharpen images. So with those three though, what does it really come down to? And it basically all comes down to the fact that you no longer will have to choose between uh, performance mode and uh, quality mode. Those are just basically going to merge. So for some games, you're going to get 4K ray tracing at 60 frames per second. That in its own, like that's that's interesting. And essentially, Sony has revealed a slate of games that are going to be PS5 Pro enhanced, which is going to be your games like Alan Wake 2, Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok. I would expect all of the first party titles, along with some third party ones. We know that Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to launch with uh, as a PS5 Pro enhanced game. So that is quite important to, to note though that not every game that is on the PS5 is going to have that that real like the real benefit of it. I suspect it will be quite a large number and most games from here on out will have that option. But still, yeah, interesting thing to note. On top of that though, you will have uh, this, what it's basically calling PS5 Pro Game Boost, which is gonna apply to 8,500 backwards compatible titles uh, on both the PS4 and 5. So that's essentially the same as what we got with the PS5, where like some PlayStation 4 games loaded a little quicker. Some of them even had higher frame rates. I'm assuming that that's just gonna mean we're gonna get more of that with more games. So who knows, maybe you'll be able to run Bloodborne on PS4 at 60 frames per second, who knows? So it's gonna be interesting though to kind of work through and see like the true impact of this new game boost for the older PS4 games. So let's talk quickly some practicalities and other things. I would say the major like most notable upgrade initially regarding that price is that it comes with two terabytes of internal SSD storage. That is a nice boost from the roughly 800 or so that you get with the base PS5. So that is, in itself worth a bit more money not that much but it's nice to know because two terabyte in my mind is close to being mandatory if you if you like to switch up your games like i do the actual dimensions of the console it's going to be the same height as the full fat base ps5 but the the width of the ps5 slim so a lot sleeker there but you're gonna have to obviously put it on its side unless you want to shell out for that vertical stand which i still can't believe is not included. <laughs> I mean, like, it just seems like a, an insane omission. To differentiate from the other models, you're gonna have this three stripe down the middle, which I don't hate. 
I don't hate. Uh, I actually came to quite like the, the slim version with the slit down the middle. Ultimately though, how am I feeling about this? I can't lie, before the price came up, I was really hyped. I kept thinking, I'm gonna play this game, that game, this game, you know, replay them, because I want to see them at 4K60 with ray trace, and I think that's really cool. Alan Wake 2 in particular was one that stood out to me. I do think that it would have been cool to have like the game attached to the box, you know, the, the big showcase game, like, you want this because this game's here. I think next year, that's gonna be GTA 6. I think this might be one that, as we go down the line and people start that PS5 Pro Enhanced is potentially gonna mean something for such a presumably premium product. So yeah, like talking about the, the specs and what I'm seeing, I think it sounds cool. I do really want it, but I do think that price is just nigh on unforgivable. It's just, it just seems so high and I can, pick apart all the reasons as to why it would be that price and why Sony is going to get away with it because people are going to buy it at that price. You know they will because it wouldn't have made, they wouldn't have been making it, manufacturing it at as high a unit rate as what the PS5 has. So they'll have a limited supply and they know that that's what it's going to gonna sell. I mean, it's it's a hard one. It looks great. It's way too expensive, but it's gonna sell pretty well, I'd imagine. And it is catering to that hardcore niche. So it's not for everyone. So that price isn't gonna reflect what the average gamer is going to get out of that product, but for some people it will. So I'm very curious to see it in action. I'd love to see how the games are looking on this thing and how much better it, it does perform and the, the PS4 backwards compatibility in particular. So yes, yeah, stick around with Push Square. Hopefully we can get our hands on a unit at some point. Like I said, it comes out in mid-November or November 7th. Uh, yeah, interesting, excited disappointed with the price but i do want to play it so there are my thoughts on the thing let me know yours down below and if you enjoyed the video remember to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more playstation video content and until next time i've been aiden and this has been push square